This is Andy Porowalk, the Boxing Social in association with Betfred. And for the first time uh, for a one-on-one -on -one interview, I'm delighted to be joined by Ebony Bridges, the Blonde Bomber. Ebony, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm very good. Good to hear, Ebony. It's good to hear. Um, obviously, you're out stateside um, at the minute. How are things going out there? How's camp been going? Yeah, it's been going really good. Um, it's been pretty, pretty good. I've been here for like quite a while. Usually, I only come to Philadelphia for like fine tuning so the last couple of weeks of my camp um and i've been able to do a whole camp here so yeah i'm learning heaps and um yeah it's feeling really good it's starting okay. to get really sharp now four weeks to go so yeah i'm right on time i was just gonna say ebony what prompted the decision for you to spend an entire camp out in, in, out in philadelphia instead of traveling back home to oz um probably the fact that um when i go back to australia i have to spend three thousand dollars out of my own pocket to sit in a quarantine hotel for 14 days um waste two weeks um the flights home are about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and then i'd have to be there for maybe a week or two weeks before coming back to philadelphia to finish my camp which is what i usually do um it just yeah it, it just wasn't really realistic with the whole covid situation it was just more efficient um financial to stay here so I didn't obviously know the, the kind of the restrictions with regards to getting into Australia then. So has it been difficult for yourself being having spending so much time away from home, away from your loved ones? Definitely. Yeah. I'd be lying if it wasn't. And actually, you know, I'm pretty like, I'm pretty like, not to say cold hearted, but I'm like, when, you know, obviously I'm, I'm very gold driven, I get tunnel vision. So I don't really care like about making sacrifices and stuff like that. And I'm usually like, I don't care. I would do what I got to do and, and that's it, you know, and I am still like that. Obviously that's why I'm doing it and making any sacrifices, but there was a point, you know, like um, a couple of weeks ago, I had like a month, like I was real down month, like, man, I've been away from like my family, my boyfriend, like everyone, like for so long. And it wasn't expected, you know, like I literally got the call to fight Shannon Courtney, packed my bags one day after my fight and then came to, to the UK and I was, I didn't know I wasn't going to return. I didn't know that I wasn't going to go home. So, um, it's been a, a bit of a kind of a shock to me, I think. Um, a bit of a shock and a bit of a shock that it's actually bothering me. Like that's not, not that I don't love my boyfriend. Of course you're going to miss him, but it's, it's, it's very different. Like because of the kind of person I am, um, I just don't let emotions or I don't really get, you know, like it's too bad. It's just it's what you got to do. And I do think like that, but there was points where I was like, fuck man, like I would love to see my cat, boyfriend, mum, you know. But um, it is. It's getting closer. So I got to fight four weeks. Every every day is closer to getting in there, doing what I love, and you know, it all makes it worth it when you get in there and you you do that. You know. Do you think these experiences, though, in some way, will kind of help you moving forwards with your career? In case, I mean, you know, touch wood, it's not the case where it happens again, but at least you know what to expect if something like this did happen. Um, definitely. I think um, I love my camp here in Philly. I've got great trainers here. Half of me wishes that I had a setup in the UK because I think that would have been much more ideal. Because ideal. there's even problems traveling between the UK and the US, you know what I mean? Because I'm not American. I'm Australian. I'm just like random, you know what I mean? So I'm not anything. So it's like getting back into the US after the UK is actually really hard as well because they're not letting um, tourist visas or, or non-citizens come from the UK to to America. So, you know, it's, it does make things really difficult. There's always this thing like if I go to UK am I gonna be able to get back to the US like am I yeah like you know it's all very but I just got to do it and um whatever happens happens and I've got that mentality that everything happens for a reason and um it's all happened how it should so I just got to embrace that all right we're going to move on to hopefully some some fun funner um, kind of conversations now and um, <laughs> we'll wind on to the, the fight itself that's coming up for yourself Beck Connolly come August 8th yeah. First and foremost, you know, where, where did this fight come from, Ebony? I think it came from Beck Connolly's Twitter fans, to be honest. <laughs> um, I, you know, no offence to Beck, but I wasn't really that interested in fighting Beck. Um, you know, I just thought that, um, you know, I had different, you know, different goals. Um, but she was calling for it. You know, she had all her people tagging Eddie and, and you know um chasing chasing the fight and to be fair um I love giving the, the fans the fights that they want which I do love doing and seemed like a lot of people wanted this fight they wanted to see it um so 
yeah, when I got the call, I was like, you know what? Like I talked to my manager and we're like, it's a, you know, first fight back after the Shannon Courtney one. So it's probably a good fight for me to have. She's, um, she's a fun fighter. She's actually great. I love Beck. Like she's cool chick. Um, and her style is, is good for me. It's a fight that, um, I can, you know, show, hopefully show off a lot of different, um, aspects of my boxing and also, um, if she wants to actually, she says it, if she actually wants to sit with me and trade and come forward, like she says she does, um, then that's going to be a, a great for me because no one ever comes forward on me. And um, I love it when they do, because then I'll come forward and then we can just sit and bang. So we'll see if that's how it goes. I hope it kind of does, because that'll be a lot of fun and it'll be a good fight for the fans. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited. She's fallen short in the majority of her fights, but she has fought some, you know, re reputable names, yeah. the likes of Rachel Ball, Tasha Jonas, Terry Harper, uh, Ellie Scottney, Ramda Ali. But with those first three in particular who have all fought for or are world champions in some cases, is this a chance for you to make more of a statement in comparison to what those those girls did? Definitely is a chance for sure. Um, you know, um, Beck gets very short notice for her fights, you know. She got three days notice for Ramla Ali. She had to cut 16 pounds in three days. At least got near a week, you know. These other guys are week, two weeks, three weeks, you know. Um, she's fighting heavy or she's cutting, doing a hard cut because she's not getting notice for these fights. I'm not saying it's, you know, that makes it easy for them or whatever, any any case. But I feel like I've given Beck an eight week camp. I think we're going to see a different, you know, a different Beck, which is going to be fit, she's going to be in condition. And if or when I stop her in the fight, it's going to make a huge statement because I'm a 118 pounder. You know what I mean? Ellie, Ellie Scottney, um, Ramal Ali, a lot heavier. You know, they couldn't stop her. So if I can stop her at 118, I think that's going to make a pretty big statement um, because only really Terry Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas at lightweight or super light could um, stop her. You know, and, and Beck's quite small for that weight. You know what I mean? She's not not really um, supposed to be, I don't think she's fighting at that weight anymore. But yeah, so I think it can make a statement. Um, I think it's going to be exciting. I have a very different style to all of those fighters. Um, so hopefully I can show that off and, um, yeah, put on a good performance that will um, be eye-catching and maybe something for the real. You mentioned earlier you expect Beck to come forward. Certainly when I spoke to her, she said she's going to come forward and it will be that fan-friendly all-action fight. So just from yeah. your own perspective, what what should fans expect when you are opposite each other in, in the ring about to, to, about to start fighting? Man, I just know what I'm like. And, I mean, if she actually – look, they all tell me they're going to come forward and they stop going forward. They, they end up going on the back foot. So I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, hold my breath for her to come forward on me. But if that's what she plans to do and she wants to come forward and see with me, then, um, yeah, it's, just, it's, going to be an, it's going to be an inside fight. And that's my bread and butter. And it won't last. It will not last. If she's going to sit in there, I can't see it lasting. Um. If she ends up going on the back foot and that, then it'll be the same thing it was with Shannon. I'll just be having to ch chase her down, cut her off, and then try and break her down, you know. And um, yeah. I just wanted to jump out, Ebony. You mentioned kind of the Shannon courts and I thought you was very much on the front foot in that Shannon boxing on the back foot. But when the moments arrived, she stood there and she did trade with you before moving again. Was that a surprise for you to face somebody like that in comparison to your, your your past opponents where you was able to kind of continue to walk forwards? Was it a surprise to you to have someone who was going to stand up a bit more when the fight progressed or was it just something you expected? No, I still didn't feel like she really sat and punched that much. Probably very similar. It was still just me chasing and going forward and trying to cut her off and stuff and her moving, not planning, not moving, not letting me plant. You know what I mean? It's not the same as sitting toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone. Definitely not. She boxed me. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, I didn't see any real difference at that. The only difference with her was that um, she was tough, man. Like, she could take a punch. Like, Shannon, like, that surprised me. Um, and because I, I know that I have power and, and um, you know, she's obviously in condition, which was great. Um, and she's strong herself, you know. Um, she's got some nice snap to her punches. Um, so that was, that was, you know, something different. But, yeah, I mean... I still felt the same kind of thing for me. <laughs> Go for cutting in, chasing down, you know what I mean? I mean, if you was to, I imagine it's something that you'd love to have a rematch with her at some point. How would you, yeah. if at all, approach it differently? Um, I probably, oh, I don't know. 
um, let my hands go more when she did stuck stuck there with me. You know what I mean? Um, I like to pu um, punch selection. I feel like, um, man, I mean, I watched that fight. I, I, thought, I, I thought I won it, you know, at the worst of draw, to be honest. Um, I feel like my inside work wasn't getting noticed. Um, I feel like I was throwing combos on the inside, short little combos, you know, um, that just weren't getting noticed. I felt like the judges weren't seeing the fact that I was blocking so much shit and slipping so many punches. It just looked like they were just seeing her, cause she has really long arms. They were just seeing kind of her wild swings and, and stuff. Don't get me wrong, she caught me a couple of times, but I caught her as well. So um, I don't really think there's too much more I can do with that except for, yeah, just, um, you know, maybe more body work to slow her down so she can't run around so much, you know. Um, but, yeah, I just think if we were to fight again, that it would be an even better fight for the fans. It would be exciting. No matter who wins or loses, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. I just I think it would be a great fight um, and better than the first. And hopefully I'll have three, to have two eyes the whole whole fight instead of, <laughs> you know, blind for three rounds. No, I mean, 100, it was a fantastic fight, uh, Ebony, between a pair of you. But she actually fights the week before yourself. She hasn't got an opponent yet. Did you actually ask Eddie if there was any chance of a rematch there, knowing that she didn't have Of an course, opponent? yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. It's, it's, it's not to, got to do with Eddie. He can't force her to fight me. Eddie knows that that's a big money fight, you know. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, I don't mind having a fight, um, fight first, whatever. Um, but I would have definitely, if I was asked, I would have definitely put my hand up for that fight, 100%. And um, I would have had a full camp for it. <laughs> It would have been nice to have, you know, a full camp because last time was like four weeks and I travelled between three different time zones in three weeks. You know, it was like a week, two weeks in Philly, then a week in the UK from from Australia. Like it was, yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, I'm, I'm interested to see. I, I'm pretty sure I know who Shannon's fighting, so I'm interested to see that fight. Um, I think it would be, I think it would be an easy fight for him. So would you say then, with, with that in mind, that it was more so Shannon who didn't want the fight, uh, the, the rematch that is? Oh, def definitely. Got nothing. Mate, if she wanted that fight, the fight would be done. Because I want that fight, you know. Um, she, you know, she was chasing Shannon, um, Rachel Ball for a rematch for how long? You know what I mean? So she should know what it feels like. She does know what it feels like, but she doesn't care because she's got the belt. And that's fine. She's got to go do her thing. You know what I mean? Um, but she won't make it money, you know, we need this amount of money with any other fights than what she would make with me. Um, but at the same time, I don't think she really cares about the money. I think she just wants to, um, you know, defend her belt and maybe try and unify. And then maybe if I can get a belt in a different division, then she'll be forced to fight me if she wants to unify or, or go undisputed if she if she is able to unify with anyone else. So, Ebony, aside from Shannon, provided the, the, the August 8th bout with Beck Connolly goes to plan, sorry, the August 7th bout rather, um, what what are you looking at beyond that? Have you thought about potential opponents? Have you got anything in the, in the pipeline? No. Um, yeah, I'm fighting um, not too long after, but we don't really know what the goal is with that, um, as in fight-wise opponents. Um, I want to try and get a belt, you know, whether it be an international intercontinental or some kind of belt to get me in the rankings or I can fight another champion. I'd love to fight um, Cecilia Roman. You know, she's an IBF champ. I think that would be an amazing fight. You know, she will sit with me and we'll be sent a ring and we'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe and that'll be a brilliant fight. That'll be a real fight for the fans, an exciting fight, like a female kind of, you know, Mexican-style fight that people love to watch, you know. Um, so that would be something that I'd like to do for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure if that that's possible. And, yeah, I mean, there's a couple other champs that they want to fight. I'll fight, I'll fight anyone, you know what I mean? Uh, I know in the past you've mentioned Rachel Ball, um, Ebony, but I know she, at the minute she's got a, a few issues outside of the ring that she's kind of dealing with. With that in mind, are you still hopeful that one one day you guys will all cross paths and also kind oh, of definitely. Are you to see her kind of missing out this this part of her career? Yeah, I would love to fight Rachel as well. Um, you know, obviously not, like, I forgot about her, but she's out injured, so it's not really something that, you know, I'm thinking about. But yeah, I mean, that could be a great, again, a great fight. Um, she has the WBC Super Bantam interim or something like that. I mean, I don't. I'm a I'm a 118 pounder, but if I can fight her for a belt, I will. You know what I mean? I'll I'll go up wait for a belt. Um, but yeah, I think um, I'd love to have that fight. You know, it'd be a good fight for the fans as well. You know, so that's definitely an option, and um, that would be really cool. 
just a few other things I want to get your thoughts on, Ebony, before I do let you go, just kind of in the boxing world. Um, so anyway, with the female sport side to the sport, something that's been spoken about a lot recently is three-minute rounds, whether it should be introduced or not. Uh, Ebony, are you an advocate for that or are you against it? What's your thoughts on it? It's pretty tricky, um, this discussion, um, because it's always, a, for me, it's just all around money, you know. Um, I'd love to do three minute rounds because I do think we'll get more knockouts because I know that a lot of the times with my opponents at the two minutes, like, like if we just had that extra minute, like someone's going down, like it's even Shannon Shannon and Courtney fight. Like there's times where I've rocked her right in a minute or she's rocked me, like that extra minute could have, could have finished the fights. You know what I mean? You see that all the time. And I feel that in my fights where I'm like, damn, like she just got saved by the bell again. You know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, it is more work. It is more risk. We're in there for longer. We are under more risk as well, not just my opponents, but me for getting knocked out. And the money's not going to match. You know, it's not like all of a sudden we're miraculously going to start getting paid now because we're in the ring for longer and putting ourselves under risk for more, for longer time. It's, it's We're not going to get more pay for it. We need to get the ratings up first. We need to get the people watching and tuning in. So at two-minute rounds, we can get more money at two-minute rounds. So we can get that commercial value at the two minute rounds. And then I think once that's, we got people actually tuning into us more now, which is what I'm trying to do. It's what I fucking promote myself so much is because I want people to tune into women's boxing so we can make that money. Um, then yeah, we can look at three minute rounds, but at the money that most of us are on now to go up to three minute rounds with no change of, um, of purse, which it won't be because we're still going to be getting the same fucking views, like for at least a little bit, you know, I just feel like it's, yeah, I feel that's the problem. Um, so, yeah. And then you know, oh, if we get more knockouts, we get more views. But do we really? Will we really? Because girls do knock out other girls. That does happen. You know what I mean? It's not like none of us have knockouts, you know. Um, so is that really the case? It's just people aren't interested enough in women's boxing yet. Hopefully I can change that. And I'm pretty sure I, I mean, Shannon had a lot to do with changing some opinions. And hopefully it continues. Ebony, you mentioned kind of why you push yourself and you promote yourself so much. Um, and certainly everybody sees it over social media. You're brilliant at marketing yourself. Um, does it frustrate you then when maybe people take more of a, a negative look at how you, you do it? Not really. I don't really care what, what people think, that people don't know me and what they think. If I cared about those people and if it affected me, I wouldn't be where I am. I'd be sitting back crying, going, oh, they don't like me. You know, like I'm not like that doesn't bother me that's their problem they can't see what I'm doing um and they can't see the good that it's doing and, and my mission which is getting eyes on women's boxing it's not just about me sorry battery <laughs> it's not just uh, about me you know um I have a lot of followers but I also constantly support other boxers other female fighters I'm always shouting out other female fighters and we're sharing their stuff and we're supporting them because because I know people are watching me I know people follow me so if I can shout out these guys and put more attention on them then they're going to get more attention. Women's boxing are going to get more attention. You know what I mean? Um, and that's one thing I think Shannon really missed in our fight, you know, giving me criticism about it. It's like, mate, if it wasn't for me, no one would have tuned into your fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no one would be talking about you, you know, like, so you got to understand, you got to appreciate the what I'm trying to do. And if you can't see that, then I don't know, you're blind or you just don't get it. And if you don't get it, then I don't care. Because <laughs> um, I'm the one making money. <laughs> Um, Ebony, moving forward once again, obviously, you know, everybody knows you're a maths teacher as well. And something yeah. which I'm interested by is kind of your future with regards to that and being a teacher. Is it something which you're thinking about having to leave behind if you do go on to, <coughs> excuse me, challenge for world titles or become a world champion? You know, naturally, I would assume you wouldn't have the time to be able to teach and then go into camp and what have you. Yeah, I've already had to give up my job because I've been stuck overseas for like four months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, I've um, already kind of given up my job and sacrificed my job um, to chase the fights that I'm doing at the moment. Um, I won't be home to September, October, something like that, you know. So, yeah, I've had to unfortunately give that up. But I've always got a position at my school. I've done a lot for my school and, and I love teaching and it's something that I'll always do. If I'm at home doing camp, I'd still love to teach and be at my school at least once or twice a week or as a part time because I just love it. And um, it doesn't take it out of me because it's something that I love. But um, I wouldn't be able to do a full time teaching good job while doing that. No, definitely not. But boxing doesn't last forever. You know what I mean? Um, I'm already kind of a bit older and, um, you know, I don't have as long as a 20 year old or a 22 year old, or 25 year old in the sport. So um, 
I definitely see um, teaching still going to be in my future and I still want to keep connected to it because I do love it. It's something I'm passionate about. It's not just a job for me. Um, there's a lot more behind the reason I teach. So, yeah. Ebony, you mentioned you're, you're a bit old. I think people will be surprised to know you're, you're 34. Um, do you feel the pressure to kind of capitalise on the next couple of years then? Do you oh, feel definitely. the pressure? Definitely, and that's why I've pushed myself so hard. Maybe if I was like 20, I wouldn't have like just really like forced myself onto everyone, <laughs> you know, because I've got more time. But, um, you know, having that is going to – um. Having that kind of what I feel is like a bit of a rush as well, um, it's worked out for me because here I am, you know, two years as a pro um, and I'm already here, you know, one of the most, you know, talked about female fighters at the moment, boxers at the moment um, globally. So I think I've done pretty well um, considering I'm from Australia, <laughs> you know, we're quiet down under there. No one knows about us over there. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's not a bad thing. And um, I think that's, from the way I've been able to um, bring myself to the forefront, it's got me a lot more than just the boxing opportunities. It's got me a lot of other opportunities in many other things, you know, um, which will always be available to me, I think. So, yeah. Do you hold any regrets not stepping into the sport a bit sooner? I don't regret anything in life. Um, sometimes I do wish that maybe I started a little bit earlier, but at the same time, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens when it should and, and how it should be. And I'm a strong believer in that. Um, yeah, I could say, oh, I wish I was able to do it from, you know, teenager or, or whatever. But then would I have the experience that I have? Would I have the mentality I have from, you know, bodybuilding training, that mind thing? Would I have the power that I have from 10 years of lifting? You know, everything is different. So everything happens how it should. I don't know if I'd have the maturity back then to be able to be how I am. And I would be having maybe not have the same message because I hadn't been through everything that I've been through to be the person I am now that I'm able to show the world you know what I mean so um no regrets I, although I wish I was this person but maybe like five years younger that'd be fucking great but um you know that's not a possibility so I'm just making the most of it while I can now and at the same time trying to inspire other girls and help other female fighters teach not teach them like I mean I'm a natural teacher but support them and encourage them and try and show them you know you can't be me you know there's only one blonde bombone and you can't follow me and try and copy me but you, what you need to do is find what it is that you're what you can bring you know and you need to do everything that you can do to be your best and and you know it's really important that marketing thing and that it's a business people don't realize like and I knew that you know I'm mature I'm old enough you know 22 20 year old might not understand well but you know what do you mean it's a business like you don't get it you know what I mean I have that maturity to understand that and um know how the world works you know so um I think that being able to help ki like kids I call kids but younger people um able to you know manage their career better um I want to be able to do that you know and hopefully I can just show people a different way as well you know like we don't all have to be Katie Taylor you know we don't all have to be like exactly the same fighter to be successful you don't have to be like that like you can be your own person completely I'm completely who I am I haven't changed for anything with all the hate and the criticism I still stay true to myself and that's something I push stay true be real and stay true to yourself no matter what because they're going to love you or hate you. It doesn't matter. And what all that matters is that you're you're succeeding and you're doing what you want to do while still being yourself, you know. And um, you just got to show the world what you have to offer, you know, and, and do your thing. And that's what's going to be different. And that's what's going to be successful, not trying to copy someone else because they didn't get there by copying someone. You know what I mean? Well, Ebony, that is very, very well put there. Um, just want to get your thoughts on a few potential fights that have been discussed in the women's side of boxing. Uh, get your yeah. thoughts on a little breakdown from yourself. Like I say, Clarissa Shields, Savannah, Savannah Marshall. If we saw that one, what would be your thoughts? Oh, this is so hard for me. You know, I was always like, you know, pro Clarissa. I think Clarissa is absolutely amazing. I mean, she just impresses me every time she jumps in the ring. She just gets better and better. And I just love her style as well. And, um, but Sav, like, you know, she's, she's, she's got that power. She's got a little bit of an awkward style. Like it's, you know, it looks like it would be hard to deal with. And, um, you know, um, I'm a big, big fan of Sav, especially, especially after meeting her in my last fight, like she's awesome. You know what I mean? So that fight, like I'll be watching it cause I love them both like as people as well, you know, like a big fan of Clarissa and, and a big fan of, um, Savannah and, um, I'll be sitting there like not wanting anyone to lose it'd be so hard I feel like Clarissa would win on points or Savannah has to knock her out that's how I feel it would be 
Um, yeah, but I don't know which one. So uh, yeah, I don't think Clarissa will knock out Savannah, but um, I think that she could she could outpoint her with her slickness and her accurate punching as well. Another fight, Katie Taylor and Chantel Cameron. Oh, she, Katie Taylor, I think. I mean, um, I've only seen like, to be fair, I've only seen like maybe two, I think, of Chantel Cameron's fights and her opponents have been pretty low level, like nothing. You can't really judge someone on that. You know what I mean? Like I can tell she's good, but she hasn't even been tested at all. Like, you know, and I'm not saying that when she gets tested, she's not going to be amazing, but it's to com to say her against Katie and, and Chantel's heavier as well. You know, they're a different weight class. So I don't know, maybe if it depends if Chantel has to go down to Katie and Katie has to come up, but yeah. Um, yeah. So, then, sorry, I'm, I'm very bad at picking, but yeah, <laughs> I think I picked Katie for that. I'm so indecisive. It's because I'm such an analyst. Like I analyze everything. <laughs> it's so bad. It's okay. Sorry. Um, final one, Michaela Moya and Terry Harper. Oh, Michaela Mayer. <laughs> it's got that one. Oh uh, yeah. I love Maya. She's she's brilliant. Every time she gets in the ring, another thing. Every time she gets in the ring, she just looks better and better. Adds more and more to her stuff. You know what I mean? Um, I love her body work. I love her combos. You know, um, I just think she just lacks a little bit of power, but she's she's very smart boxer, very very experienced, um, and I think that she can she could beat Terry. Now, Ebony, I know um, last night over in the UK, it was a bit earlier over in America, you tuned in to watch the England-Italy Italy game. Unfortunately, England fell short. Just kind of get your thoughts. Uh, devastated. I was like, seriously, like going to shed a tear. I swear to God, I was so gutted. But I wasn't gutted for me because I'm not English, but I was gutted thinking about all my fans and gutted about thinking about, because like, you know, like I, I love my fans and I just know how much it meant to them. And I was like, oh, I'm so I feel so bad for you guys. I can't believe it. And I, for the kids, obviously, that, um, you know, the, the boys that miss the, the kicks, like, I couldn't even imagine what that feels like. You know, I think the goalie, um, he was stoked that he saved that goal because he's like, thank God, if, if anything happens, it's not on me. Because, you know, obviously, like, if, if you let the goal in, it's like all oh, your fault, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's just... It was a game. What a game. I mean, I was like sweating. <laughs> I was like stressing out so much. Yeah, it's far out. Anyway, it's yeah, it's sad. To... Sorry, I was just going to say, is it something you're hoping to kind of take in next time you're over a, a, league, a Premier League game? I know you 100%. Mean... I'm a huge Leeds. I'm a huge Leeds fan. Um, like a big Leeds fan. You know, I've been to Ellen Road. Last time I was in the UK, I got a tour around Ellen Road. It was like the most amazing, it was so amazing being in there and just seeing it, you know, the, the stadiums are so much different to Australia. And um, I honestly can't wait, can't wait to go and watch Leeds play live. Um, it's going to be, it'd be sick. I definitely like, it has, it's on my bucket list, you know? Um, and yeah, just seeing the, the crowd at that English, like that fight, uh, fight, that game, it was like intense. So it's just such a shame that, um, some people get drunk and they, they, you know, they cause dramas after and all the fighting. And I'm just so upset and hurt for all the racism towards the boys um, after it. Like, I just don't get it, man. Like, um, it, it breaks my heart, you know, um, to think that people would have to, they have to say, um, they have to mention colour and, and um, make it like about kind of race and stuff. Like, I just, it's heartbreaking, you know, um, the English did so well. Like, I mean, they weren't even meant, like they, no one even had them to make, to win, the, to, to even get into the finals. You know what I mean? Like they weren't favorites, like, you know, um, and they just did so well, the whole Euros and um, the game, they did so well. Um, and then just that at the end and, and what Brits then, you know, not obviously all the Brits, but some fans, how they, they chopped down the, the players and the derogatory comments and the, the the racism it's just it's 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 fucking sickening sorry but it's it's just it's unacceptable you know what i mean and um i hope those boys are okay and um i'm, I'm sure they will be but yeah you know gotta spread love not hate man <laughs> That's well put there at the end, Ebony, and I'm, I'm sure you're not the only one, a uh, lot like myself, who doesn't understand why certain people decided to go about kind of commenting in the way that they did uh, after the game. 
but I know that you're in kind of a, a sticky situation now because your your phone is about to die. Um, so I appreciate oh, yeah. the time tonight. Uh, well, I said it's not um, midday for you, Ebony, but it's been a pleasure yep. to talk to you for the first time. I want a final message from yourself for your fans, your followers, for those back home in us who are looking forward to seeing you when you return. Just a message to everybody. I just want to say, obviously, a big shout out and big thanks to all my fans and followers. Um, you know, I, I say it over and over again for me, my fans and my followers are like my promoters. They have been for over, you know, over a year. They're the ones that push my name and support me and believe in me. Um, my OGs, um, my 69ers, you know who you are. Um, and that sounds weird, but if they know who they are, and it's my Twitter thing. But yeah, you know, who's always supported me from the start and, um, you know, no, um, ha never had a doubt in me. I appreciate that. And all my new fans and followers, you know, keep tuning in, keep watching me, Blonde Bomber, because um, I'm always going to be exciting. You know, it's, it's always going to be a good fight. My fight on August 7 is going to be going to be unreal. You know, Beck's going to bring it and it's definitely going to be something that's going to be very entertaining pre and post fight during everything. So, guys, thank you. Thank you for everyone back in Oz who continues to support me. Um, love you guys lots. And I'm looking forward to coming home to Australia with a belt. Ebony, it's been a pleasure to talk <laughs> to you for the first time. Best of luck with the rest of your camp and, of course, on fight night. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate you. <laughs>